All right, let's get into it, shall we? So we've got some good old-fashioned beatdowns here. Um, for uh, people that are my magic audience, the most comparable thing that this deck is is kind of like a Grawl Monster style deck. It's an aggressive deck that goes a little bit bigger. So we're actually only playing Garen as a champion. So he is a 5-5 five, five with regeneration. So it means he heals up at the end of each round. He levels up when he's struck twice. And then it's level mode has at round start rally. So while this doesn't do anything on your normal attack token turn, what this does is it means we get to attack every single turn. So on uh, normally when your opponent would be the only one with the attack token, both you and the opponent have the option to attack when you gain priority. Um, notable here on Garen is that he has this elite title up here. This is kind of like a, uh, a tribal allegiance type thing. We have a number of cards in this Arctic that care specifically about elites. So... For the Fallen here says, when you summon an elite, reduce my cost by one. So it starts off as eight. And then says, for each ally that died this round, summon a Dauntless Vanguard. So summons more elites. We've got uh, Vanguard Squire here. When you summon an elite, reduce my cost by one. We've got uh, Battlesmith here that says, whenever you summon an elite, grant it plus one, plus one. Remember, grant is a permanent modifier, so it makes it permanently plus one, plus one. And then Bannerman isn't technically an elite synergy card, but it has this allegiance mechanic, which cares explicitly that you have a lot of Demacia cards in your deck because it grants you a bonus if the top card of your deck is Demacia. So that's why we are a mono Demacia deck. So we get to go ahead and pump everything up. So let's go ahead and dive on into some game with this and see how it goes. We played against this deck on the ladder a few times. It seems pretty consistently powerful and sweet. Morn and Hexapelagic. I think, I think this type of deck we had talked we had talked about um we had talked about how um c aggressive decks that are looking to power up one specific thing like the the overwhelm decks that we played yesterday with Lucian and Zenith Blade and things like uh Vi feel a little bit mediocre in the format right now because things like Hush and Frostbite are really good because of the Lee Sin decks that are popular. And I think this deck that we're playing here is a good example of a good aggressive deck right now because it's not impacted by those things. Um, my opponent's deck is also likely a very good aggressive choice right now. So they are playing uh, another another mono champion deck. So Noxious Shadow Isles is usually a spider burn deck. Hush, Hush does turn off granted plus ones. However, like spending one mana to like wipe a plus one off your opponent's thing like isn't a particularly good rate, so... I think I'm mulliganing at least one of these, looking for something cheaper to fill in on the curve here. It might be right to mulligan more, honestly. I'm gonna mulligan all of these looking for ones, and ones, twos, and threes. Is there an aggressive deck? I'd like my curve to uh, be a little bit lower to the ground. Cardis, thanks for the 27 months. Welcome back. I appreciate it. The finest Demosian steel. Uh, so this can't block either of these, and I think my opponent's oh, unlikely to want to trade, so I'm gonna go ahead and attack. They are trading. Okay, fine. I think that's I think that trade's fine for us. So these are fearsome, which means they can only be blocked by things with three plus attack. It's a decent draw. It says Challenger, so it can force things to block it. So it's going to get to uh, force this to block it next turn. It summons an extra copy of itself when it comes into play, too. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good observation, Hank. Yeah, like, like a, uh, I think the Harrowing version was really sweet at one point, but I agree with your assessment that the Harrowing variation is probably worse because of, uh, because of how much deny people are playing at the moment we just attack like this so these will all trade off we'll take one here i assume they might chump block here Battlesmith is definitely powerful, but I think in the in this matchup, I think getting a trade early with it is fine. 
our our units on average are going to outsize theirs as is so i don't really think we need the extra help and i want to just keep my life total high in a deck that doesn't have the ability to gain life Sounds good, Socio Penguin. I appreciate the tier two. Welcome back. I'm actually gonna. So for my schedule next week, I didn't think about this this week. Um, my my schedule for next week, I'm arranging in a way that will let me. Uh, I'm arranging in a way that will let me have the kids around more often for the variety stuff because they really like those those streams. These all have Challenger now. I'm just going to go ahead and ban him in here. I could also attack with Garen and then single combat. The Lift our spirits. We stand strong. We stand strong. And I appreciate the very generous tier 2 Sosa Penguin in the 26 months. You know, uh, so my opponent... I think we're gonna win this game by miles not inches and my opponent selected to pass back here so rather than attacking and getting in a strike with garen even though that could potentially be good my garen's not leveling this turn and it's likely gonna level in my next turn anyways so i'm actually just gonna go ahead and pass here so my opponent does not get a chance to use their mana so had my opponent made a play there um i would have attacked because i wouldn't be ending anyways but yeah, i think burning a lot of their mana there is very very profitable for us Now and forever, Demacia. This will shake him. Attack seems really good for us. I think I'm just playing this. It's gonna make me two, right? And then next turn. Next turn, I'll bank this mana, and then I'll have eight total, so I can four Demacia plus plus Relentless Pursuit. How long do I play this game for? About an hour and a half, usually. You can always find my schedule that includes not only when I'm going to be live, but what I'm going to be live with when up on my website. Ooh, that's a banner, man. Okay, so I have to decide, do I want to give all of these 3-3, three, three, or do I want to add a thing and give them 1-1? One, 3-3 one? Three, is probably better, right? So this is notably a slow spell, so my opponent will get a chance to uh, to play things after this. They have 11 mana here, so I have to hope I'm not gonna get uh, I'm not gonna get burned out from here. It's unlikely, but not impossible. Yeah, I try to stay very organized around here. It's also available in the stream information section via the extension widget that's down there. If you're new, if you're new to the channel, I. Uh, I do about three hours in the morning and about three hours in the evening every day now. Yes, yeah, so this this rally here giving us an extra attack. Really one of the, this is really one of the more powerful cards about this deck, especially when paired with the four Demacia here. So normally this card's only till end of turn, so you only get one attack with it. But when we get two, it's really brutal. That'll happen. Rally. Opponent is dead. We did what was right.
A space smash face. How am I liking the balance changes so far? I don't think, I don't even think. I'm not a fan of what the Lee Sin change has done to a lot of the format, I think. Can you rally two times in a row? Yes, you can, Vapor Bear. So the way rally works is it happens so long as you don't have an attack token already. So you can't like stack multiple attack tokens and have multiple attacks waiting to happen. But if you've already attacked for the turn, you can then rally again to get another attack. So it's not like magic where you can stack them up. But you can attack two, three, four times in a turn even if you have multiple relentless pursuits and enough mana for them. Sorry, to comment on the balance changes, um, I feel like while while I'm glad they kind of tried Lee Sin, so for people that haven't touched Rune Terror recently or aren't familiar, they made a champion uh, stronger that was previously unplayable. And in general, I like that they work to try and not only make things that are too good worse, but make things that are weak better. But Lee Sin, the way he plays out, tends to be a very combo focused champion and I think the types of combo play that he creates tend to not be healthy for a top deck in the format to have that type of gameplay it's um it's a type of gameplay that's actually very common in magic and one of the things why I like rune Terra. um oh I could have Sithra first so I didn't Sithra first because they have I didn't one I didn't think about it but even if I think about it, I don't think I'm supposed to Sithra first there because they have Keg and they're a Make It Rain deck. So I'd prefer not to play this out and have her die to Make It Rain before I can Powder Keg. Sure, deal. But anywho, so Lee Sin creates kind of combo focused gameplay. And while there is counterplay to the type of gameplay Lee Sin creates, it's it's basically Hush and Frostbite that really give you meaningful counterplay. And I think having the range of meaningful counterplay be that narrow isn't really ideal. And that's kind of atypical of a lot of the Rune Terror gameplay I've experienced so far where answers tend to be more flexible and generic as opposed to needing to be narrow and specific. Never lost a fair game. Mm -hmm. I Perhaps I shouldn't have played this uh, Twisted Fate deck. Sad. Looks like trouble. So, I'm still enjoying the decks that seem playable in this format, but the change to Lee Sin feel like it, feels like it kind of narrowed the window on which decks I can play a little bit. For just yeah he is such a big boy chat the stat the stat line on this card is just so good just like a five six for five is such a big big unit and then he also helps them deal damage every turn so can't attack my five five into their five six you want it right. yeah yeah and that's the other thing too right like i'm not super worried about it like the rune terra devs do balance patches every two weeks there's still plenty of decks I've been enjoying in the meantime. So, if I... Bannerman, I can single combat to kill Gangplank, which I think is appealing here. So, again, priority passes back and forth every time you play something in this game. So while I would like to have Sithra get the bonus from this, if I don't play this, they're pretty likely to attack with Gangplank. And I want to have a blocker down before that happens. Hey, Farsight, thanks for the 21 months. I'm glad you're looking forward to the open. I'm not, I'm a little, I'm not sure how this next open is going to go over. House banning, the number of cards that we're banning for it is kind of creating a new-ish format, so I'm interested to see how people feel about that overall. Justice waits for no one. Do you feel that Ezreal got nerfed too hard? No, I don't think so. Hon honestly, 
Ezreal... Ezreal wasn't really very popular even before that changed. Good luck out there, recruit. Captain Crownguard, I'm Cythria. Alright, do I just single combat now? I feel like I should single combat now, huh? Yeah, and playing playing in the open is is far from the only metric I use to judge whether or not I consider them a success. In fact, the viewer count is more important than the player count, if I'm being honest. My, my goal here is to provide content people want to watch, and I'm glad we have people to play in them, but overall, the number one thing I look at for is this a success is definitely, definitely the viewer count. All right, so we're gonna silver vanguard here with the hope that we can get in and hook both of these. I think this is easily the best curve out attack deck in the format. I like it. I like it a lot from that perspective. It does an excellent, excellent job at that. Now make it rain here. Try and high roll. Well, at least gonna get to play this to uh, draw a card after. <laughs> wow, that's super unfortunate. They got super lucky. So, Make It Rain targets three things at random, and they targeted one to save Jack, and the Make It Rain saved the Twisted Fate. Probably did here. This is dealing another two, and they're going to have another two next turn. Our ancestors are watching. Lock the doors. Lock the doors. Aren't any goods here? Just me. This at least threatens to block Jack. It's a shame we don't have one more mana. Now you cry. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to play this and attack with everything, but I assume we're dead. I mean, all of these are fearsome now, so like, Jack's got a block here. Are we one short? We have eight, we have 13, that's so brutal. <laughs> they are, they are the luckiest make it raids in the game, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's brutal. We're one one point short of killing them in combat there and the make it rain hit our dome. Woof. Hey, nice multiple. Congrats. So make it rain targets three things at random. Orient Soul. So, Demacia Dragons. I think I'm mulliganing all of these looking for curve. 
I'm gonna keep the banner man. Perfect. She goes down to three when we play Sith throughout. So now I have a three drop to play on three. My journey continues. You have healed two. So we're going up to four mana next turn, so we'll have five mana on our next attack. Okay, that's decent. So I get to go Vanguard Defender here, which makes this a two. And then I can play this out, and then next turn we Bannerman and get an attack in. Now, they discarded a 4-5 dragon earlier, the challenger dragon, so I'm kind of expecting them to have another one. Wow, that's their play? All right, deal. Oh, I'm about to get, I'm about to get swift whatever, aren't I? That's our judgment. I've got a single combat though, so that's fine. So they have judgment here. We single combat here, here. Nope. So we're down to four, and then on their turn we get to deploy Sithra, and then we get to open attacks the following turn. Ours is the one true light. Devotion to battle. Yeah, they, they probably have another reading guardian, right? I think I have to save single combat so I don't die to judgment, right? So they're going to survive here because Radiant Guardian has life steal. We'll lose some things. We have Battlesmith and Vanguard Sergeant on their next turn and then a decent attack the following turn. Punishing Waterfalls. Thanks for the 34 months. Welcome back. Oh, I guess we might even be playing these out on our turn. So we're going to kill some of our stuff and then I've still got seven resources. More on Impit Small. Stay back. So this 2-2 two -two will hop in front of Sithra and they'll end up at 3 here. The guilty were bad. Let's go to Adtawa. We aim to please. Good morning, youngest son. Virtue guides me. Yep. Confirmed that they had... Another Radiant Guardian. Sturdy blades, custom made. How was your class this morning? Thanks. It was good? Yeah. 
Orion Dante, thanks for continuing your sub gift. I appreciate that. Welcome back. To the pirate deck. Are there any decks similar to Jeskai Control in Modern in Legends of Runeterra? So, um, I guess actually War Mother's Control is probably similar. I wasn't a huge fan of that because it didn't play to the board, but it's a deck that has a pretty good win rate on the ladder that a lot of people have done well with. How do we feel about single combating here and then playing this out? I think I like that. I need, I need to get through these eventually anyways, right? I guess I could also just play into open attacks next turn and hook these here. But they're probably going to attack with these this turn, right? So maybe I just hit okay. Thanks, Orion. I appreciate it. I'm gonna pass and see what they do. I think they're, I think they're probably attacking, right? Because they want to gain life. Mm, that's a good thought. So if they attack with both, I can throw the 3-3 three, three in front of this one and then single combat here. So the problem... Oh, they're just passing. Wow. Uh, yes. So combat in this game resolves left to right. So, when I order my challengers down here to the right, I get to go ahead and um, have these combats resolved before any of these happen. So, click. Yeah, I agree. I love, I love combat order mattering. It is, it is phenomenal. It's a, the order of your attackers mattering allows Rune Terra to pack a lot of depth and decision making while still limiting the board so it works well on mobile, which is great. Okay, so they're having both of these strike this. So I think what I do here is I single combat have these two fight. Which means this will get to live, and then this won't, and then neither of these will strike this, so they won't gain life. So you can see right now, I mouse over this eye. This shows them going to 15. So I can go ahead and single combat here, here, and now the eye shows them going to 10, and you see the other things no longer dying. a third Radiant Guardian. In a long path to get <sighs> Discipline and steel. Well, if we win this game, it will be quite impressive. Do you have the Orient Sol to finish the curve out? Okay, so we can no longer beat Judgment. There was a point, there was a point in time where we could beat, where we could beat Judgment and we're no longer there. So we're going to go ahead and single combat here. Next turn, we'll four Demacia, we'll attack, we'll hope for the best. Their archetype does not have any reach in it, so going to three here should be fine. Spell shield only counters opponent spells. I am more myself. 
I am never. really surprised they didn't just hush a second time right away to hush Sithra's bonus off. That could that could cost them here. Hold back the darkness. Reconsider. Stay back. Open your eyes. That's quite enough. Putting the valuable targets last was better. Yes, that's a good thought. So I should have put my bigger things down here and lined these up first. So that way they had to block one of these three because they're at 15. Yeah, it's a good that's a good thing to good thing to note. Because they have, because they're eating Guardian's life steal. Had I, had I ordered these three first, they would have been forced to block one of these three. That's a good thing to note there. I mean, like, they're at four, and we've... They had triple Radiant Guardian, and we've gotten them to four. So, like... If I single-combated Garen into Guardian... No, Garen was a 5-5, five five, right? And they, and they got lucky on the celestial generation. We've been, we've been really, we've been really unfortunate so far this morning. Between, uh, make it rain RNG and their invokes, like, yeah, it's rough. I've been finding the switch to morning or in Terracotta. Fine. I think my plan. So because I'm doing two different, two different segments now in the morning and the evening. I think my plan is to shuffle around when I'm doing which segments with the different types of content I'm making. So like, for instance, this week I'm doing Rune Terra and Historic in the morning. I think next week I'm going to do variety segments in Historic in the morning and then Standard and Rune Terra in the evenings. Twisted Fate Gangplank again, eh? I think I'm going to keep a four of the Fallen in the opener. I'm all the rest of these looking for a better curve. Yes, Declan. Where? Oh, from 30 to 1? Because 30 is the last day of the month which means the new month starts. So after 30, we go from September to October. It's dangerous out there. Take this. <laughs> November, December. Exactly. Just like your months of the year song in school. Oh, this isn't an elite. That's super awkward. I was hoping we get to play this to curve out. Feels, feels bad, man. Yeah, yeah, we mulliganed looking for a better curve. We were not graced with one, that's for sure. Safety will cost. Yeah, my my goal is to cover a little bit of everything each day. So like as long as as long as standard and historic are both reasonable formats in magic, I plan to do a standard deck and a, and a historic deck every day. And then a return deck every day as well, obviously. Hook this here. I think I attack with this. I have another one if this dies. He's pretty close to leveling up. So if they want to trade here, I'm okay with that, I think. Just 
So, a lot of the games you lose with this deck plaid aren't, like, at least so far, the games we've been losing haven't because our opponent wipes out our board. It's because we're, like, kind of losing close races, like with that honor in the last game. So, I don't know that Haru ain't gonna necessarily get me out of anything. I also think that with the Lee Sin patch, um, Deny is more popular than it's ever been. So, putting a bunch of 9 mana slow speed spells in my deck against uh, Deny, a format where Deny has gotten better sounds not great. Yeah, outside of outside of scheduling the opens, which I plan to schedule about two to three weeks in advance, I I don't plan to commit to a schedule more than a week out. Alavish, thank you for the half year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So I have some sequencing decisions I have to make here. I technically, I had this three spell mana bank, so I can rally this turn. Um, so I could Sithra plus rally, or I could Vanguard Bannerman plus rally. I'm going to Sithra plus rally. Are they timing out? I think they disconnected. We were talking in chat, but I think that their disconnect timer just ran out. Yeah, it looks like they DC'd. That's sad. Uh, that happens sometimes. Honestly, uh, I'm kind of surprised it doesn't happen more often with uh, Rune Terror being a mobile game. It's definitely easier to randomly disconnect on mobile than it is on, on PC. Justice with a sporadic quality, uh, internet connection qualities. Reaching your bus stop is a good disconnect reset. Yep. Yeah, this hand's actually really good, right? We get to go Smith into Sergeant, into Vanguard, into uh, Squire. Yesterday, I went one stop after my destination because of Runeterra. <laughs> Happens. So, this opponent, we're going to get to see the matchup that our last opponent this deck from. So, Twisted Fate Gangplank here. I think Twisted Fate Swain is better than Ezreal Vi. Ezreal Vi isn't really a deck I'm familiar with or played against. Whereas uh, Twisted Fate Swain, I think, is definitely an established good deck, but I don't, I don't really have uh, a baseline metric to like evaluate, to evaluate uh, easy buy with, because it's not an archetype I'm familiar with. Shackle the prisoner. Our curve here is actually going to be quite delicious, so we get to go. Uh, Silverwing Vanguard next turn, which will make this cost oh, one. Sweet. And then we can go like this, 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 depending on how things light up. Yeah, we're, we're going to have a really good turn five attack for sure. Regardless of what happens, our turn five attack should be really good. Alright, so with that play, do I... Oh, I was to say I should play around Twisted Fate red card. 
But I have Battlesmith in play, so these play around Twisted Fate right guard. Nailed it. Safety will cost And then next turn I get to go this, this, this. We're in concede territory. They have a bunch of three power units. So like my challengers are going to trade with their three threes, and they have a couple of other trades on board too. I think, I think they're in a. I think we're probably a little bit ahead, but I don't think the game's anywhere near over. Am I trading Battlesmith here? I feel like the answer's no. Is this also Sithra? It is, isn't it? You pick the losing side. I didn't do nothing. Fire everywhere. No. We'd rather challenge the two ones. Um, no, nah, I think I'm okay clearing out space on the board here. Yeah, yeah, it makes uh it makes Twisted Fate's right card better, which is something we mentioned we were playing around. And like I said, I, I kind of want to deploy this next turn so I can open on attacks the following turn. Or maybe even just open on four Demacia. So clearing out clearing out space on my bench here is like not a big deal. Huh. With this, do I just go this, this now? Yeah, I think that's the play. So I, I assume this is going to trade with my 5-2. And then we'll get to draw a card. New recruit reporting in. I'll do my best. Remember the fall. I have two mana rolled up here, so I get to uh Get to have single combat available here as well. So in Sithra attack, she gives everything fearsome. Never lost a fair game. Or played one. Yep. Dead in their tracks. I got just the thing for you. I'm okay with this trade happening now. Let's just go ahead and get in there. Buy me a favorite lump. You're bluffing. Charmed, I'm sure. Yeah, I agree with I agree with Rangers Resolve being a hard fit into the deck. The day deck's very synergy driven, so like you want all of your cards to fit into your primary game plan. Yeah, yeah, they've only got two cards left here, and I've got a bunch. I'm ahead on board here by a pretty significant margin here as well. They need to, they need to have, like, warning shot into Rex, and even that might not be enough at this point. I guess we're going to find out, huh? <laughs> so, do I just single combat these two? I think so, right? Means I take two extra, but I kill their shark. Sithra has magic spell shield confirmed. Look at we were we were due for some good variants, chat. We just talked about how we'd been incredibly unlucky so far today.
Misfortune Gangplank. So, Pirate Aggro again. Um, means that we probably want to mulligan for Curve again. I think I'm just going to full mulligan and look for one, twos, and threes. There's some twos and threes. No one's the wiser. This will shake them. Yep. It's a pretty good one, shit. That's really scary. Uh, I don't think I'm supposed to trade here, but six damage is so much damage. All right, I'm gonna trade. Sorry, Smithy. Like I can just keep sitting there and taking hits. This card is so good in just all the matchups. It just like fogs us real, real gross here. Everything's in place. I won't back down. You would test my steel. So this is free, this is free, this is free. Every way is a path. Do I just do, do I just like play this and make two three threes? So, right? And then we do this next turn. Vodemasia! Their hand was good, but so was ours. Do I do that? I don't even think I want them to have the free blocker, right? I think I just say, okay, do your thing. Because this, this is vulnerable, but it can't block. So they can't choose to block with this. I guess Gangplank's about to level here is the issue. I think we're gonna die. Our, our start was good, but theirs is just much better. Really, really needed a single combat this game, right? To be able to kill this. Yeah, we just died this attacking and overwhelming, right?
So, Swain Twisted Fate here. Um, this is, honestly, compared to the last deck we just played against, it kind of shows the range of archetypes that Rune Terror supports, even within the same faction combination. So, this opponent is also a Bilgewater Noxious deck, like the aggressive deck we just played against, but their deck is more of a mid-range control deck, assumes a much different role in the actual games as they play out. Okay. Keep up, keep up. Our Damascian soldier is worth ten foes. So Next one, I'm going to have five, six mana total. It's kind of funny. Uh, I mean, local... Local sample sizes exist in every game. I, you know, I've been playing... An hour and a half to two hours of Rune Terra every single day, and I can't remember the last time I played against They Who Endure. That's kind of kind of amusing that that's that's all you've been hitting. I think I'm gonna start by attacking here. They have five mana available, which means they can play out larger things like Swain. So if I deploy units, sure they could attack this turn, but my opponent could also put extra blockers out. So that's not ideal for me. Actually. I actually think the Lux Ash deck's a great choice to be playing if you're running into They Who Endure, though. Having a bunch of Flash Freezes and Harsh Winds is excellent in that matchup. I feel like that play is a win for me. So I'm going to play double Vanguard Defender out here. We're going to bank two mana, and then we're going up to six here, so we have eight total. So I could Vanguard, Bannerman, and Rally this turn. We could Garen and Rally this turn now as well. So I'm going to bank a spell mana here. I will break. So I'm going to bank a spell mana here. And then I'll go up to 7. So I have 10 total mana next turn. So I can Vanguard, Bannerman, and 4 Demacia, which is nice. wonder if they're going to attack with this into my 3-2 here. If they have a way to deal one damage to me directly to my Nexus, they'll get to stun this with their leveled Swain, which means Swain can hit me because he's fearsome and just destroy me. So hopefully they don't have a parlay or a make it rain or another a parlay or a uh, warning shot here. Yeah, Ravenous Block would have also let them get through because my my three my three three power unit was damaged. Yeah, pretty pretty fortunate they didn't have any of those there. Depending on what they do here, I might just end up attacking attacking three times. 
Continue, continuing our opponents being very fortunate with their make it rains here. They hit our... I guess I guess they hit our tough things. Alright, we'll do this at least, but... Feel sad to get Garen. Get Garen stunned again here. Next turn, I'm only going to have eight mana, unfortunately. Which means I can't do both of these. They don't have great attack attacks here, at least to start. Is it a flavor fail for Lonely Poro to come into play as Petty Officer's friend? That's a good, that's a good question. They haven't just slammed a boat yet, so maybe they don't have it. Leviathan would be pretty devastating here. Wow, Salvage as their first play is really good for us. Percentage of Rune Terror cards. I have all of them. Riot, Riot supports their... Riot really supports their content creators, so... They gave me they gave me a bunch of cards. I bought I bought a number of them before they did that, but yeah. They gave me they gave me a bunch of stuff. Do I want a double rally? I don't know. Double rally is not lethal, right? Since they stunned my thing. My sword is yours to command. No doubt. Totally victory. I'm just gonna go to my turn here. This thing got challenged randomly. It's rude. Yeah, I agree that we are currently on the open attacks plan. We do what is right. That is a Garen's judgment. So a battling ally strikes all battling enemies. This is champion spell. Actual judgment sees some play too, though. Just run while you can. A lot, Logan. Yeah, I'm set. I'm set for Rune Terror cards for the next probably year years worth of expansions. You lack discipline. You got legs. Use them. It is. It is very strong. You are not wrong. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Zigzags. With the uh, with the amount of free to play rewards that you get for playing Rune Terra on average, I'm probably probably set for till I decide to stop playing if ever. Judgment with Vi? That's kind of a neat build around idea. I think that idea is kind of bad at the moment because the Lee Sin deck means Hush and Flash Freeze are better positioned, but Vi with Judgment and Demacia Shell sounds kind of sweet. It's 
So I can four Demacia, Relentless Pursuit, and Single Combat. Lux Vi is a tournament deck. Does that mean it's a deck that's not actually very good, but it makes you feel smart while you play it, so you play it in a tournament to feel smart during your tournament? Is that, is that how that works usually? I don't know. It's just, it's a hard sell for me that like, a deck isn't competitive on the ladder, but it's competitive in a tournament for some reason. Can you explain to me what about the deck makes it competitive on the ladder, but not competitive, or not competitive on the ladder, but competitive in a tournament? So I don't, I don't understand why that differentiation makes sense. Sure, but dude, like, that that just means that that just means people in tournaments aren't registering good lineups. Like, if people if good tournament decks are ones that can't beat aggro, that just means people aren't registering enough aggro, like showing up with two and three aggro lineups. It just sounds like an under underdeveloped, underappreciated. And like there aren't a lot of tournaments in Rune Terra, right? So like you need a lot of tournaments like that regularly to get that kind of cyclical people targeting and attacking things. One of one of the things that I like about Rune Terra that's very different than Magic is in Magic, aggressive decks are better on the ladder and worse in tournament settings because aggro decks tend to be worse. When in Magic, when you have uh, public information known, but in Rune Terra, you have public information on the ladder, right? So it's the exact same setting. You know what you're playing against, which is great. Speaking of, this is an aggressively slanted deck, and I think we're gonna full ball again here. Again, just like Neve Curve. You can bet, yeah, but that that's the point, chat. So like again, if you ban if you saying you can ban the aggressive deck is implying that there's only one aggro deck people are registering in tournaments, which in my mind means that the tournament the tournaments are underdeveloped in terms of probably likely due to how how irregular they are. I also I also think that the multi-deck format a lot of these community tournaments have been using is super restrictive to the point of allowing things like that, which are bad. Um, I really like what... I really like um, the multi-deck gauntlet that uh, Rune Terra did in-game. I think that was really well done, where they... where they had it so you couldn't overlap champions, but you could... You could overlap regions. My journey continues. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like that I I like I like the the Rune Terra the setup the Rune Terra folks did a lot, a lot better than what uh, a lot of the community events have been doing. When is the Rune Terra competition I was invited to? It's actually this weekend, but I decided not to play in it. Because they're just, uh... They're just... I, I could... Because, talking about the deck restrictions, I couldn't find a deck I wanted to play. Like, the restrictions were too much, and I'm not going to commit to two days of playing in a tournament. Like, if I don't have three decks that I want to play. Are we bannermaning here? I think so. To me. Safety will cost you. the name of our land. Smash. Say your farewell. You poor thing. Yeah, yeah, has some of the same issues that the unified T terminates the magic used to do. I don't know. Like I said, Riot seems to make a lot of good choices. I think they really hit the nail on their head with their deck restrictions, where you could have region overlaps, but you can't have champion overlaps. Yeah, 
Damn, I'm an old man who plays games for fun. If I'm not going to enjoy my time playing them, I'd rather just do something else. Well, that was a good nab, chat. That was uh, that was a good nab. I am a dirty, filthy casual who plays games for fun. It's really, it's really terrible. It's a shame this isn't cheaper. But is against marijuana? Nobody reasonable should be against the legalization of marijuana. The criminalization of marijuana? was an incredibly racist thing done by racist people to demonize and attack very specific communities. Captain Crownguard, I'm Cythria. Marijuana should be legal and it should be taxed and we should use that tax money to improve our countries and our cities. Any tips for an MTG player who started in Runeterra? I would, uh, I mean, if you've been playing for a few weeks, I assume you played through all the, all the tutorial levels. Not, nothing, nothing really there. I don't think there's any kind of special, like, secret sauce. Just play, play more games is the answer. Garen, Garen getting vulnerable here is real bad. It means Sithra gets to force him to block. I guess if they don't open on attacks, he says, before they open on attacks, we could forward him off CM. Because they know, they know about the four Demacia from this, so they should definitely open on decks here. Yeah, just actually just getting beat by our own deck. <sighs> Defeated, but never broken. Oh, we could have leveled Garen with single combat. Maybe that gets us out of it. I don't know. It still feels like we're pretty fucked. For the, for the record and clarity's sake, I've never smoked marijuana. I don't ever intend to, but it's just very stupid that it's not taxed and that tax money's not used for something useful. Bless the paper and fear the heritage. Illa, Illinois elected a Democrat governor in 2016 or 20, was 2016 or 2018? Might have been 2018. At any rate, we recently elected a Democratic governor here in Illinois. He's been kicking ass since he, since he was elected. We not only uh, legalized marijuana in Illinois, but we expunged the records of a bunch of people who were in, in jail for nonviolent drug offenses. Which is what needs to happen everywhere. Pale Cascade, sure. No mess. 
feel like I'm okay with them expending this amount of resources here. I didn't say our governor was moral. I'm pretty sure he's a billionaire, in fact, but... He's at least doing things that are reasonable. He's also like, the things that he's done, I actually voted against my current governor in the Democratic primary in Illinois, because he was explicitly not a progressive. And the fact that he's, like, done the things he's done while explicitly not being a progressive gives me a lot of hope for Biden. Might actually get some reasonable stuff out of him. Especially if we, if we keep, uh, electing reasonable people to the House and the Senate. We're just playing another one of these. Who did I vote for in the primary, if you don't mind me asking? In my Illinois state primary, I don't remember at this point. Remember what? I don't remember what their name was. It feels like a different life. That was like, 2018 was 10 years ago. Man, I just don't have any good attacks into this, huh? Do I just like burn a single combat here so I can concerted strike it next turn? That's probably the line. I'm just going to strike this in response, right? I guess another alternative is I could Sithra into Sithra and then try and set up the rally kill. I don't hate that either. Like, they didn't... Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill this because it makes judgment worse. I guess this gets blown out by single combat. No, it doesn't actually, right? Because there's a single combat here, which means it still dies. Because neither of these can single combat to kill this. Do I rally here and smack them? Nah, I probably want to save it for Sithra next turn. All unbelievers will see the light. I'm going to sit on the rally still. I'm going to sit through on their turn and then hopefully rally and kill them. Hmm, now we can battlesmith into sit through. It's dangerous out there. Take this. You're not wrong, TBS Coke. You're not wrong. So, six plus three here, so we get to go Scythra into Relentless Pursuit, and then if that doesn't kill them, we get to open on attacks the following turn. 
And the fact that Daylight was their play here. The, the fact that they never found a Leona this game was very good for us. She has a very large body and Sun's our biggest attacker. Why'd they not jump block last turn? I don't know. But my board's about to be very scary in the literal sense, which is, uh... Soldier, to, me. to me! And she's an 882, just a big gal. They only have one, they're only gonna have two blockers here, so they should be dead here. Well, three blockers, they should be dead. Well, I guess again, they can block this with one of my other things. Here's Lee Sin. It's actually our first time running into him this morning. Um, I'm going to mulligan the sergeant looking for a one or a four so we can curve out. Our two is fine. We're going to go two, three, two, Garen. We'll have some draws in the middle too, so we'll see if we can fill the curve out with anything else. Perfect. The spirit gives to those who listen. To those who listen. It is time. Stand strong. Am I willing to trade this for Pale Cascade? I think the answer is yes. Yet, innuendo, you're not, you're not wrong. Christy, uh, Christy had to go in to get some tests done because we thought something might be wrong, but it's not and everything's fine. But like, waiting to get that done we had to like wait over a week to get her an appointment with someone it's it always makes me chuckle when like and by chuckle i mean hang my head and be really frustrated when people are like well if you have socialized medicine you won't be able to get you won't be able to get that care you need right away like you do in america now and it's like well if you're saying that you very obviously haven't experienced the current American healthcare system, because there's already a lot of waiting involved. Yeah, it's said by someone who's never had to actually experience the current American healthcare system. Yeah, and like... So, like, this is kind of what I was talking about with Lee Sin. I'm not a huge fan of this buff. I feel like this card being a meta-defining card isn't super healthy. Like, our deck basically just can't do anything against this, right? Like, we don't have Frostbite and we don't have Hush, so we just have no counterplay. And it just, like, sits here and holds the board hostage, basically. Yeah, and not only that innuendo, but a lot of the traditional answer cards just aren't playable against him, right? Like, this is a good example. Like, my 
my entire deck is based around like being able to get into combat with things and the fact that this thing gives itself barriers just means i never have an opportunity to profitably interact with it I once went to my regular doctor who referred me to a specialist who told me there was nothing to be done. The process took several months and cost me hundreds of dollars. Yep. Honestly, you're fortunate that it only cost you hundreds of dollars. Discipline and steal. Yeah, yeah, I think I think Lee was overbuffed. I'm pretty pretty solidly of that opinion. I also, I also think, um, and this is something that's important too to discuss, even if you think Lee's okay from a power level perspective right now, which it might actually be. I'm not 100% convinced that it's it's actually over buffed. The types of play patterns that Lee generates, I don't think are healthy. I think having this really difficult, it's big. The Lee deck as built, this deck, is basically a difficult to interact with combo deck. I, 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 honestly, I don't even know if just dropping his stats more is enough. I kind of think if they want this effect to be this cheap in terms of mana, I don't, I don't feel like, um, I don't feel like this, this, the way this card is designed is healthy for a top tier deck. Single combat Lee so they can play some spells and give him a barrier. Enter your spirit. Prepare yourself. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that's great about Runeterra is there's a hundred different knobs they could churn. Right, like in terms of things that could be changed, there's lots of them. Alright, so I currently have nine mana. I think we're just playing Sithra out. And then next turn, we will four Demacia and attack. We'll play this too. How can Riot sell packs if they just lease it, right? I th I think Lee's type of effect is neat when it's novel, dude. Like, but like I said, when it's when it's an established best deck in the format thing to be doing, I don't think it's healthy. The drunk owl. Thank you for the 12 months of support. Let's get your sword to go with that shield. I appreciate the prime. Yeah, yeah, the way the way dragons kicked overact was overwhelmed makes it a combo deck. In, big big agree. Ooh, that's a good draw. Deny me, daddy. Oh, yeah, you know just what I like. Conflict is all in the mind. The dragon spirit awakens. Um, I think if they want Lee Sin to be a cheap competitive card, it needs to not interact with Overwhelm and Dragon's Rage the way it currently does. I think as long as Lee Sins and Dragon's Rage interact the way they currently do, it won't be healthy for Runeterra as a game.
but do not see. So I'm going to do this. This puts them to nine. And then maybe we punk them out with Relentless, Relentless Pursuit here. Do these things keep fearsome until end of turn? All right. Do you have Deny Numero Dos? Are we gonna do it? Are we gonna sneak past him? Oh, are we gonna sneak past him, chat? If we don't kill them here, we get combo killed next turn, so fingers crossed. Our enemies cannot hide. The dragon binds us. <sighs> close, close. And so again here, with that combo finish we were talking about, if they have two spells to make Lee... If they have two spells here to give Lee... Or even just one spell, right? One spell gives a challenger. So they have a spell, we die. Some of that capture unit removal. I don't know. I think you'd rather just try and get lucky or punt the matchup. And again, that's lethal because it gives Lee Challenger. And so, again, the, the combo interaction I've been talking about here is when this attacks and challenges something, it Dragon's Rages it, which effectively gives Lee Double Strike. So Lee's going to hit us for 18 here. Put us to negative uh, block here. And then we still take 18 down to negative 4. Yeah, it's an unblockable double strike. It's unblockable double strike that kills one of your units in play. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap on this deck for the day. I don't know. We had a pretty good set overall. Uh, I think this deck is, seems very reasonable against... Um, this deck seems very reasonable against the various uh, smaller aggressive decks of the format. Traditional uh, game theory style play of being slightly bigger with chunkier units tends to be good against aggro decks that are a little bit lower to the ground. So I think against pirate aggro and against things like spider spider bird aggro, this, um, this archetype tends to be very good. I think it's kind of mediocre in the Lee matchup. Um, if you really wanted to play this in the Lee matchup, you could technically splash another region at the cost of making your Vanguard Bannermen a little bit less consistent. So, like, I don't know. Maybe you just, like, smat, splash, hush, or frostbite so you could beat Lee. Yeah, like, that could, that could definitely be a reasonable choice. You just, like, splash, splash some hushes because you have the, the second region to play with anyways. Yeah, I think I think as long as Lee is what it currently is now, that's probably not a terrible idea. All right. At any rate, we're going to go ahead and shift gears here. We're going to play some Historic on Magic Arena up next.